Okay, um, we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about the inverse hyperbolic cosine function in this video. And here we have, if we're concerned with this function here, the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x, and that's equal, we just set it equal to some variable y, then that's the same thing as saying that the hyperbolic cosine of y equals x. And this is the graph of the hyperbolic cosine function. And over here is the inverse hyperbolic cosine function. Notice that for the inverse function, x is always positive. And like we did in the last video, here we're going to find a logarithmic expression for the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x. And we do that, again, by working with this equation here. Um, here we would have, from here we could say that e to the y plus e to the minus y would equal 2 times x. We'll bring this over here. We have e to the y minus 2x plus e to the minus y equals 0, and then multiply through by e to the y to get rid of this negative exponent, and we have e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y plus 1 equals 0. So we're all set to, find, to solve for e to the y using the quadratic formula that will equal 2x plus or minus the square root of 4x squared minus 4 divided by 2. Or, let's just write it real quick. We can take the factor this 4 out and take it to the outside of the square root sign and we'll plus or minus 2 square root x squared minus 1 divided by 2. So here now we have two expressions for e to the y. It equals x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 or e to the y will equal x minus the square root of x squared minus 1. And we'll stop and look at this. We know that e to the y always has to be positive, and we also know that x is always positive. So here is what we're worried about because we're subtracting something from x. But in this case, what we're subtracting now is the square root of x squared minus 1. Of course, it was just this would be subtracting x. The square root of x squared is x. But here I'm subtracting something from that. So what I'm subtracting from x is a number smaller than x. And x is always positive. So this will always be positive. And that is always positive. So this, in this case, both solutions turn out to be valid. So now we can write, take our logarithms, and we'll have y equals natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1 or y equals natural log of x minus the square root of x squared minus 1. And again, very straightforward, um, uh, very easy to set up. Uh, there's no tricks involved. One thing that we might check out here is, remember when we were dealing in a previous video with the um, hyperbolic sine function and, and its inverse, we noticed that when we took the reciprocal of x plus the square root of 
x squared plus 1, that that equaled minus x plus the square root x squared plus 1. This we noticed in a previous video. And here we have x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. What happens though if we take the inverse of that? Let's see what we might get. So we want to look at examine this. The 1 over x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And to get rid of the square root sign, we'll multiply top and bottom by this, x minus the square root of x squared minus 1. And this will equal it stays the same. And here when we multiply, we're going to have x squared the inner terms cancel out and we're going to have minus x squared minus 1. x squared minus x squared minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1 so this time we see that the reciprocal of this equals this so that's right here so what we can say then is This is being the reciprocal of this, then this right here would be the log of this would equal minus the log of this. Or we could say this the log of this function right here would be minus the log of this. So when we're thinking about what is y, we can combine this into now just a single expression. We can say that y will equal plus or minus the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. And that's something that is not immediately obvious. Um, and again, we kind of noticed during the first video here that when you take these reciprocals here, you get a function that you might not might not be readily apparent until you took the time to monkey around with it. Um, so right here then, for the hyperbolic cosine, we can have two different forms for its inverse. So let's write it up here. Is what is y? Y is the inverse hyperbolic cosine of x. So this will equal plus or minus the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay. Um, that's it. As you can see, there's no, um, it's looking complicated about it. It's just a matter of just following through. What may have been a little bit sneaky is when we get to the end here and realizing that we can combine these two expressions into a single expression here. Okay, uh, that's it. Come back and join us for some more videos, and we're going to work with some more inverse hyperbolic functions.